Well, good morning, everyone. This is Jim Moore, and you are watching Words of Encouragement. It is April 10th, 2023, and this is uh, Monday morning. Yeah, episode number 623. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you had a great Easter. Hope you had a great weekend. If you didn't, you're going to have a great week in Jesus' name. Uh, again, mm -hmm. I'm in an area out in the de Arizona desert. Uh, choppy. Coverage is choppy. So, yeah, it's a, and it's especially wonky this morning. Hi, Angie. Hi, Isaiah. God bless you guys. Especially wonky this morning. So, again, if I lose you, please uh, hang on. I'll do my best to come back. So, uh, again, hey, and good morning, my friend. Good to, good to see you. Amen. Make sure and come on, say hello, so we can say hello back, as long as my peepers can see you, which I don't always see you well. Linda, God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. So, yeah, it's a great day. So, yesterday, uh, Linda and I got to go to a, a service in Casa Grande at Crossroads uh, Church, great big church, and it was wonderful. And I uh, had a kind of a unique, I'll just share a little bit before I go into the uh, word this morning, but had a really unique service where the pastor uh, did a funeral march and you brought in a literal coffin, <laughs> you know, and printed up, a, you know, you get those little handouts. There's my love. God bless you, Linda. I love you. Uh, you know what you get when you go to a funeral, you know, you get the program in memory of and a picture. So they had that and they had the picture of Jesus and and, you know, here lies Jesus, you know, and he was killed by blah, blah, blah. And he did all this. And then, of course, he rose up at the end and it was it was pretty cool. So, amen. Hello. Let's see. Rugged. Nice to have you. Amen. So anyway, it was a great, uh, great uh, weekend for us. And we just had a great time, you know, celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is is just a phenomenal thing. It really is. So I do need to, however, uh, make a correction. And so I have always talked about, hey, Robin, nice to have you again, politicians and preachers who prophesy or state something where they make a mistake and then they never come back and correct it. And I, I feel <laughs> I've always said that's wrong. Well, I made a big one yesterday. So I uh, I came online and just talked a little bit about Easter uh, versus um, resurrection, you know, whatever. And I made a statement about the Hebrew calendar that I didn't know of one of the feasts. So all the feasts point to Jesus, right? I'm not going to go into that real deep, but good morning, Robin. <clears throat> all the feasts point to Jesus. Passover, Jesus is our Passover lamb. Don't have time to go through them. But they all refer to the Lord in one way or the other. Well, in my mind, I was thinking there was no feast that represented the resurrection of Jesus. And I literally forgot about one of the feasts. So, and uh, Terry uh, Zumbush, I think is how we say your last name. And this person, uh, Gil, nice to have you. I can't say the other name. Uh, but our good friend Terry uh, corrected me. And so I want to say I made a mistake, okay? We make mistakes. Preachers make mistakes. It's okay. <laughs> so there is a feast that represents the resurrection of Jesus. Very biblical. And it's the feast that says, good morning. It's the feast that says um, that Jesus is our first fruit. So the one that comes right. So there's Passover, right? That's the, the when the lamb is slain, that points to Jesus going to the cross. And then the resurrection is typified through the Old Testament feast of first fruits which comes right after passover there's passover unleavened bread first fruits so i missed that okay so i put a link i've actually got three links today i'll tell you boom 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 real quick what they are but one of the links uh refers to that terry said hey jim uh i think there is a feast that represents the resurrection i think i knew this at one time <laughs> pray for my brain um anyway so I looked it up. Sure enough, Terry was right. So thank you, Terry. Uh, I was wrong. Look it up. Go to it and just look at the list of the feasts. It's a tremendous study. I wish I had time to go and do it right now, but I don't. Okay, so that's link number one. Link number two is a message that Chris Reed spoke yesterday at Morningstar Ministries, the 11 o'clock Sunday service. Phenomenal. Now, again, I feel like there's a couple of things Chris said that I don't entirely agree with. It's okay. We have to learn to listen to one another, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones, you know, love each other and not go. 
I, I cannot tell you how many times I've had people that will listen to this message day after day after day, and then one message, one statement that they don't agree with, and they're like, I'm done. <laughs> we got to stop doing that, okay? Nobody gets it right all the time. All right, anyway, Chris's message is really, really inspiring. And hey, Aaron, how you doing, brother? Good to have you. And then the prophetic ministry that this man, the mantle for prophetic ministry that he has, I haven't seen anyone on his level for a very long time. So you're going to love that message. I think you go in about an hour in. I wrote it down. So take the time to listen to that. You're going to be glad you did. But sometimes you got to really listen, right? Okay, not you, you can't just turn it on and go about washing. You know, you got to really listen. So anyway, it's good. And then the third thing is what I want to talk about today the the religion of violence now the third link um oh and i need to love you too thanks for your comments by the way um the one of the things i need to say right away is i'm not sure i'm going to be able to do tomorrow's uh, justice for america program because we're supposed to be doing some traveling again so watch for the announcement tomorrow yes or no um, yeah, if I can't do it, then I'll, I'll pick up and do it just as soon as I can. So, um, we're in that zone right now a little bit where we're, we're traveling and we're doing all that. So, <clears throat> amen. Yes. Amen. Awesome. Oh, I just thought you might like to see my t-shirt anyway. So the third, uh, link really has to do with what I'm going to talk about today. And that is violence is religion. Now, I want to give a caveat because I believe Tucker, this is a Tucker Carlson one, and I know some of you like him and some of you don't. I don't really care. Um, I tell people all the time, it's not about whether you like me or like your pastor or like this speaker. It's really about truth. So you got to be able to look for truth, right? And um, and I feel like, hey, it's morning. Amen. Love you, bro. Um, I feel like most of the time Tucker is very good about speaking facts. Okay, facts let me just listen real close for a second. Facts are not the same as opinions. Do you understand that? Okay, there are facts and then there are opinions, right? So uh, John Adams, the former president of the United States, said it this way. He said, facts are stubborn things, okay? When you see something, it's a fact that I am right now talking to you live on Facebook, on my phone, sitting here in my car. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are facts, okay? And um, but then the things that I tell you that I believe that the Bible is a book of facts. I believe it's truth. OK, but then I give you my opinion. And that's what people do. I think that it means this. I think it means this. And we do our best to listen to the Holy Spirit. We get it right. Sometimes we get it wrong. So anyway, Tucker's um, little clip that he does today, I think, is extremely important to realize that what you're seeing right now in the world is is a tremendously important thing that's happening right now. <clears throat> it's not about attacking people. It's, you know, I, I want to stay. And the reason I'm saying all that is because there's some things I think he goes overboard. Totally. I don't believe that what he's talking about, he's talking about uh, transgenderism and so on and being a religion. It's not. I don't believe that. OK, it's OK. I can disagree. I can disagree with you. You can disagree with me. It's fine. We love each other. Great. Okay. So I think that sometimes we look for extreme labeling and extreme. This person is the devil. Well, no, they're not the devil. They might be being used by the devil, but that doesn't mean they are there. It's important that we say the truth, not just say whatever is the most extreme thing to get people to listen to us. Okay. So that's, I believe that's what Jesus does. I think we all lean into extremity one time or another, blah, blah, blah. So, however, there are some facts that are brought forth in his message that are hugely important. And I want to focus just a little bit on this idea of the accelerating violence among us, okay? And the confusion among us. So, watch it, and I, I um, encourage you, I charge you... <laughs> I, I I commend you, not command, commend you. Watch the whole thing and watch it with an open mind and understand that not everything you may be saying may be true, but look for the facts. What are the facts that are happening right now in the world? And how are, what is our response? Not, not as an American, 
Okay. Uh, yes, is in America. I know some people are going to hate that. Uh, Dana, God bless you. Nice to have you. Nicole, good for, uh, thanks for joining the show today. So I am a patriotic uh, Christian. I am a an American. I love my country. Right now, I don't love uh, the way it's being governed. Okay. And I make that distinction because it's an important distinction. I know some people say you're too soft and other people say you're too hard. I don't really care. I'm just going to tell you what I think. Okay, and you can accept or reject my opinion. But I love this country. I love what it was originally founded upon and, and stands for and so on. And it is under assault, absolutely. And, and it's not about the systems, although systems are under assault. It's about people. You need to know that our fight is for people. Ultimately, hear me now. Ultimately, our fight is not about... It is... Okay, we're fighting against racism. We are. Okay, Jesus is not a racist, and he's not a, he is against racism. Jesus is not violent in the sense of he just, everybody that disagrees with him, he conks him in the head or shoots him, you know, in the forehead with a pistol. That's not who he is, and you shouldn't be either, okay? But <clears throat> these issues matter to him, but the ultimate issue, are you listening to me? The ultimate issue, the thing that I feel responsible to keep bringing you back to is our fight is for human souls. What would it profit a man if he gains the whole world? This is probably the second of my life verse. My first life verse is one, Psalm 27.4, not 24.7, 27.4. One thing I have a desire that will I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and acquire in his temple. Number one, my, not my horizontal, but my vertical, my vertical relationship. This is my one thing, to know him and to love him. The great commandment. I'm just doing what it says, the great commandment. Him, 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 him. If that's not your, your if your, if the great commandment is not your great desire, you're missing it. I'm just going to to say it plain. You're missing it. Not according to me, according to God. Okay. According to Jesus, he said, this is the great commandment. All the other commandments hang on this. Okay. And that's the vertical, right? Like the cross, right? Vertical, horizontal. The horizontal is love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. So pressing in life verse, Psalm 27, for second one, I forget where it's at. Sorry. There we go. There's my imperfection leaking through again. Amen, Dana. Um, is what would a prophet a man if he gains the whole world loses his own soul and i extend that to people so what if if they if we get everything we want listen are you listening to me thank you love if we get everything we want in this world violence goes away racism goes away poverty goes away injustice governmental tyranny, you name it. If we get everything we want in this world and yet we die and go to a Christless hell and eternity without Jesus, we have gained nothing. Do you get that? You do have a soul and it is the most important thing. Now that doesn't mean we have to not care about all those other things. No, not at all. It's not about this or that. It's about this and that. Come on, somebody say amen, because I'm preaching good right now. It's not about this or that, God or everything else on the earth. It's about this and that. It's just about getting first things first. That's why Jesus said the great commandment is also the first commandment. Number one, in order, in line, order matters. Okay, the number one thing is him. It's him. It's him. He created you to love him. He loves you. And he wants you to love him in return. That's pretty much it. Everything else comes underneath that gigantic capstone. Then everything else, how we treat people. You know, do we hate people or do we love people? Do we persecute people or do we support people? Now, I need some amens. Come on. I'm not going to move on until you say amen. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So... <clears throat> What I see happening in the world right now, now, why am I saying all that? Because we are in danger, you, because uh, I know most of the people that watch this are believers in Jesus. You claim to be a follower. I have no doubt that you are. You love him, so on and so on. We are in danger of slipping into 
the mode of the world, which basically handles, thank you, Robin, thank you, Dana, thank you, I know, you, yeah, that handles conflict through violence. Now, violence is on the increase right now. The most recent manifestation, and it's not just one, it's not just this group, you know, we had BLM rising up in violence. We had Antifa rising up in violence right now. Now, sometimes it is groups that are legitimately persecuted. Okay. I'm not saying this group is, but I'm saying sometimes, you know, legitimately persecuted groups do rise up in violence. I don't believe that's God's way ever. I think the only time that violence is ever... Um, allowed by the Lord is when it comes to protecting someone uh, from somebody else's violence. Okay. So <clears throat> I see a guy walking down the street and he's out of his head and, and he's, he's just going kind of crazy and just, blah, you know, freaking out. You know, I see this actually quite often. I am not going to come up, you know, and tackle that man. Or if I was a police officer, God forbid, pull out a gun and shoot him. Or anything. No, 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 no. You know, but if that person goes to acting violently and hurting someone else, yes, absolutely. The Bible says that those who enforce peace and the rule of law in our societies, the Bible actually calls them ministers of the Lord. It says they bear not the sword in vain. You cannot ignore that and just say that doesn't matter. It does matter. It's New Testament. It matters. Okay. So there is a place where God says, no. I love both of those people, but this uh, one guy over here with a knife that is brutally assaulting this woman, I actually saw this on, on a video the other day, and, and it's stabbing. No, no, I'm sorry. I love both of them. I really am trying to get this one man saved too, but he's gone too far. He's doing this. He needs to, It needs to stop. And if that means uh, using a force, you know, whether even unto bloodshed and death, I think there are times that that is legitimate. So that's the caveat, okay? But now let me talk about what is happening generally in our society. Violence is becoming the go-to. You've seen it. And it is only resisted if it goes against my particular philosophy. Okay, if my philosophy is that <clears throat> racism has still not been conquered, um, and there's still, you know, a problem with that, a, a big little whatever, and people aren't listening and people aren't paying attention and enough is not happening according to my timeline or whatever. So first of all, what happens is people get loud. All right. And they start, uh, they go from, from maybe a peaceful protest to a loud protest, and then they'll start using profanity. Okay. And you see this all the time. You see people that just want to shut up the other, the, the, their, the person that doesn't agree with them, they'll just start shouting them down. You see it all the time and they go to just using the F-bomb, F-U, 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 and more and more people. I saw this again the other day. This is, this is unintelligent. It's ridiculous, but it's effective. When that ceases to work, then they move to the next thing, and that is physical confrontation. Most people don't start out wanting to kill someone, but they will, if pushed hard enough, or if they believe people aren't listening to them, go to a physical confrontation. This is not God's will, unless it is a situation of defending an innocent person, violence, warfare, things like that. You, you understand what I'm saying? Jesus doesn't do that, okay? Look, come on, let's come back to ground zero. Is it something Jesus would do? Would he get up in somebody's face and F-bomb them or take a punch to their jaw because they're really, really mad? And, well, that guy really deserved it. No, no, he wouldn't. Would he defend himself? Would he defend someone else? Okay, that's another issue. So the reason I'm saying this is because as this increases, so a person goes from, from being vocal to being angry and vocal to cursing and whatever, to fists flying, and eventually people go to bloodshed. This is happening in the transgender community right now, and it ought to be prayed against. Now, somebody can say, well, this is justifiable because 
this, you know, of this and people are not paying attention, blah, 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 all this stuff. We just had this happen the other day, uh, not with transgenderism, but with gun control. We had two uh, young black, uh, I, I don't know if they're senators or representatives, I can't recall, but they decided, now I'm trying to make a point. <clears throat> We're going culturally into this thing that if you don't agree with my position and do what I think you ought to do, I'm going to get in your face. I'm going to come up to you at a restaurant and, and I'm going to smack your drink out of your hand. I'm going to shout you down. I'm going to shame you on on uh, videos. Now, these two individuals in Congress can okay, now listen to me where we're supposed to be able to have a civil conversation and debate it till the cows come home and let everybody make up their mind and say, this is the law that we're going to pass or not. There's decorum, okay? You don't come into the that setting like a courtroom, okay? You don't come into a courtroom with a bullhorn and start making demands and just taking over. You see, that's a form of vocal, like vocal violence. You want to go on the street and protest? That's great. You're going to come into my house with a bullhorn and start yelling in my face in order to get me to listen. It's not going to happen. Okay. There are certain places that is that that's you can do that. Now, so these two guys and I really wasn't going to talk about this, but these two guys actually got ousted. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe I'll talk about this more on um, Justice for America. But I'm trying to say this is the, the direction. Okay, I'm talking about an overall issue. We are teaching our children that violence, and again, you don't start out a person who loves peace and then in the next second, you're blowing someone's head off. That's not how it works. It's a gradual, progressive thing. And if you see it in the beginning and you nip it in the bud, then you can have progress. But if you just let it go in the name of you, what you consider to be your righteous cause, you're going to lose that child. You're going to lose that war. In the end, you might gain something, okay? But in, but or in, in the beginning, excuse me, you might gain something, but in the end, that you're going to lose. So I see this right now happening with the transgenderism issue. It's just one of many issues, okay? <clears throat> so what do we do? Hi, Charlene. What do we do as we see people moving towards the idea that if you don't listen to me, I'm not only going to get louder and whoever shouts the loudest wins, or I'm going to start cursing you to where you can't say anything in return, or God forbid, I'm going to start using violence. When you watch the video of Tucker, it's going to show a clip of a young lady who was standing up against this issue of having men playing women's sports, okay? It's not political. It's not hatred, okay? you can't, Just because you label everything as hatred doesn't make it so, okay? We are called to love people, okay? But hatred, it really is an issue of the heart. It really is an issue of the heart. And you, have, you don't have any right to determine what's going on in another person's heart. But we do judge by actions and so on. But this woman, very peaceful woman, who's saying, I don't think this ought to happen, sports person, and uh, is now, she's not being violent, and so other people are being violent against her. They're just saying, we're so right, you know, the, the, you got to have women in in sports group. We're so right, you are going to listen to us, and if you don't listen to us, we're going to hurt you, physically hurt you. And unfortunately, those who govern our country not only, they don't just turn a blind eye to it, they actually support it. Now, if I had, say, Christian were to go out and say, you people are not listening to the truth, and you are, you know, you are, you are hurting yourself and other people, and I'm so angry about it because you're not listening to me, I to go from my bullhorn to start beating up people, I'll guarantee you, <laughs> I would be thrown in jail for that. You see what I'm saying? Now, I want to take you to a Bible scripture real quick, and then I'm going to wrap this up. The second chapter of Psalms is a prophetic declaration or a prophetic view. I'll put it that way, a prophetic view of what's actually happening in the world right now. You cannot, hi Monica, <clears throat> listen to me in the words of, um, I believe, Martin Luther King Jr. Hatred cannot cannot 
cast out hatred. Jesus said that. Satan can't cast out Satan. Okay. You cannot overcome hatred with more hatred. You cannot overcome violence with more violence. You cannot overcome persecution with more persecution. Okay. You cannot overcome injustice with more injustice. What overcomes hatred is the is love. You have to do the opposite. Okay. If you wind up doing the same thing that your opponent is doing or the person that you do disagree with is doing, you're replicating the activity of your enemy. Do you understand that about Satan? Satan seeks to replicate his activity. In other words, he'll come and get in your face and 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 spit and, and curse and vile. Why? Because he wants you to do the same thing. He wants you to respond in the same way, react in the same way. Okay. What about the Lord? Again, here, let's come back to him. Jesus, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He did not replicate the revilement that was coming against him because that was coming from Satan. And if he was to replicate that, that violence, hi, Belen, good to see you again. If he was to replicate that violence, then he's actually, he's actually helping the cause of the enemy in the long run. Maybe not in that one particular issue. Okay. Maybe, maybe he shouts louder than the enemy and wins the battle, but in the end he loses the war. Do you get what I'm saying? When he was reviled, he reviled not again. I'm talking about Jesus. In other words, and he told us to do the same thing. He said, love those who hate you. Now that's not easy. Do good to those who do evil to you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and speak against you. What was he saying? He's saying you have to act in the opposite spirit to win the war. Somebody comes up and they're shouting and they're screaming and they're getting violent, which you see. Okay, people that embrace things that God said not to embrace are getting increasingly violent. Don't you do the same thing. I'm not saying be silent. I'm not saying don't stand up for righteousness, but do not become the same spirit. And that spirit is getting more and more violent. Jesus said, no, nope, I don't give you permission to do that. You can't, Satan can't cast out Satan. And he seeks to replicate his spirit and therefore his actions in the person that it's being foisted upon. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> if you do the same thing, you are replicating the move of the enemy. Now, I know that might sound harsh, but that is the truth. Okay? You must see yourself as the re- representation of the representing of the Lord Jesus in every situation. Now, again, I want to say I'm a big believer that it is our God-given responsibility to defend the weak and to protect our the, the human bodies, the loved ones, the people that God has put in our circle of influence. I am responsible to protect my wife. I'm responsible to protect an innocent person that's standing next to me against the oppression of a of a not innocent person who's doing evil. You get what I'm saying? There are times. I know people want to go all the way. They want to make Jesus this this warfare guy that's out there with an M16 and a sword or whatever and a hand grenades and he's Rambo. Or they want to make him this little passive, you know, shriveled up little guy, you know, who can't speak a word above a whisper. You know, listen, you must Read the Bible, okay? Are you listening to me? It's not up to you to make him into your image because you think this is the way he ought to be. All right, so violence is on the increase. Our children will be the victims of said violence. And I don't just mean they might get shot like in the school shooting. That's horrifying. But I mean they can become the perpetrators of violence if we teach them that it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. And our government government right now is teaching that well if you if you are a persecuted, you know, you're you're LGBTQ, you're trans, you're you're a person of color, uh you're a, you're a particular rig, religion, you know what I'm saying? If you are considered an oppressed person then then yes, you ought to do that. You ought to burn down um you know, buildings. You ought to go in the street and be violent. You ought to go ahead and, and do whatever you have to do to be heard. And he, they're saying that this is okay. And our children will be raised believing. And if you're silent about it, are you listening to me? 
Papa Jim's talking to you right now, and I know I'm going to get pushback. I do every time, but I'm going to speak the truth. You are complicit if you're silent. Are you listening to me? You're just thinking that it's wrong in your heart, but never saying a word about it. That is not the same thing. That is the only thing that evil needs to triumph is good men and women do nothing. And your silence is being complicit. If you allow your children, if you allow your the people around you to believe that it is acceptable, whether, you know, uh, because their cause is right. Are you listening? Pull in, pull in, listen real close. If If you preach either vocally or by your silence that violence is acceptable because their cause is right, then you're a part of the problem. I'm not saying get out and spit and, you know, stand on a soapbox. I don't know. Maybe that's your thing. I don't know. Satan has put us into silence mostly because of fear. Mostly. We, we don't want to be the odd man out. Thanks. Thanks, Christ. Ambassadors. Love you. That's it. We don't want to be, from the time we're in grade school, nobody wants to be different. Nobody wants to be mocked. Nobody wants to be called names. You're a hater. You're a bigot. Blah, blah, blah. God forbid. Don't, don't make that true. Okay? There's really only two primary reasons that people hate Christians. And believe me, they, can, they hated Christ. They can hate you too. You just don't want to give them a legitimate reason to. Here's the two reasons people hate Christians. Number one is because they actually become the thing that they're accused of. They become self-righteous, bigot, hateful, you know, unkind in their actions to people, not from the heart, from the heart, genuinely loving people like they do their own kids. That's one reason, because we actually make it true. Or the other reason is because people who are walking in darkness hate people who are walking in the light. Listen to me. Both are true. Both are are true. It's not one or the other, okay? They hated Jesus. He never did a bad thing. He never spoke a bad word. He never was a bigot. He never was a hater, blah, blah, blah. He, he was absolutely perfect, and still they hated him, okay? You don't qualify to be that, even though you might be pretty close to it if you're a really righteous person, okay? But I'm saying people can hate you simply because you love the light and walk in the light. You think you're smart. You think you're self-righteous. You think you're so holy, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain, vain thing? Why do people hate God even when God loves them and only does what's right? Okay, So there's that side. But the other side is the legitimate side, that people have and can hate Christianity because we wind up being unchristian-like. Look at the, you know, <clears throat> the, uh, the Crusades. You know, we're out butchering people. Some of the things that Christians have done in the name of Christ have been nothing less than hell-inspired, demonic demonization of do I mean, really, for real. So those are the two extremes. There's a whole lot of in between. What I'm saying, you don't don't give the enemy in other people an excuse to blame Christianity. Okay, calm down, Jim. I do get frustrated. I have to admit. Yeah. That's probably why I don't have very many people watch this program. I do get frustrated. When I see people hurting themselves and other people in the name of some cause and thinking they're somehow going to have a happy life and win the battle and all that, it's it disturbs it bothers me because I care about people. I feel I think I do. As far as I know my own heart, I love people. And I want to see people know the truth. And I have to give them the space to make their own choices. I get that. But I'm not going to stand by and, and watch someone walk off a cliff and keep my mouth shut. I believe I will answer to God for that. Have we forgotten what the scripture says? He says, God told this to Ezekiel, a prophet, a good man, a godly man. You know, a man worth looking up to. He said, Ezekiel, I think it was Ezekiel. I think it was him. Somebody can correct me. I have a lot of correctors. Thank you for that. He said, hey, if you see the enemy coming, if I tell you that, that I'm coming, either way, and then something's coming on the land and people are going to die because of it, people are going to, are you ready for this, die? And what happens after? Heaven or hell? That's a big deal. 
It says, if you see the sword coming and you don't say anything, I'm going to hold you accountable. Listen, that person will stand before the Lord one day and have him ask, why didn't you say anything? I told you the truth and you refused to say it. Well, I, I didn't want to lose friends on Facebook. And, and frankly, I don't mean to make that into some kind of a minor issue. That's a pretty minor thing, right? Most people are not that concerned about that, even though it's like selfie, selfie, selfie. It's all about me. Okay, some people, but you, but it's gone to, it's not just, you're not going to be my friend on Facebook anymore. It's, I'm going to hurt you. This is actually happening right now. Are, are, are you listening to me? This is actually happening. There's a scripture that talked about that in Isaiah <clears throat> I forget the address, but it says, those who say the truth make them, are you listening, make themselves a prey, not P-R-A-Y, P-R-E-Y, okay? A prey is something that someone hunts after. When I go out deer hunting, the deer is the prey and I am the hunter. It says, those who, who depart from wickedness and embrace righteousness make themselves a prey. That's actually happening right now. The young lady in the, the Tucker video, uh, I can't, I can't remember her name, Haley or Kaylee or something. Sorry. I can't remember her name, but she has made herself a prey. People are after her. And that's a real thing. You know, people choose to be silent sometimes because they are afraid of being either vilified in a, in a minor way, like losing friends or being spoken against. And I know people that used to stand up on Facebook until they got enough pushback. Now they won't say anything anymore. And some have flipped all the way over to the other side where they're defending unrighteousness. Listen, listen. You defend people. Stand up for people. But don't you dare stand up for wickedness. You become the thing that you stand up for. Anyway, there are people that are literally being physically and verbally attacked. And so that is a, what, what would I say? That is a, a form of, of manipulation and, and pressure. You know, it's demonic. It's something the enemy wants to do to keep people from standing up for what is right. And standing up for what is right is not just winning the argument. It's winning the person. Okay, are you listening to me? Because I know people think, you know, I can say whatever I want as long as I'm right. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to say whatever the heck comes into your brain because you because you believe you're right. Or maybe you totally are right. Okay, God doesn't give you permission to act any way you want to act because your cause is right. He doesn't do it. Don't you give yourself a hall pass. Okay? Love is first. Truth is second. Okay, They're not exclusive. They're supposed to be together. Amen. All right. Love you guys. I'm going to stop. Um, I hope this helped you in some way. Um, I'm not trying to bash anyone. I'm not trying to beat anyone. I'm just trying to speak the truth and love tell you what is right. You're going to stand before God one day. You make sure that you're doing the right thing for the right reason. God, and this is something the Lord told me years ago. It's been a guide for me, and I'll end with this. He says, it's not enough, Jim, to be right. You also have to be right-hearted. In other words, you can be right about an issue, but if you're wrong in the way you talk about it and advance it and fight for that issue, then it makes you wrong. You not only have to be, see, this is the Lord, right? He wasn't just right in everything, every issue, every social issue, every, every moral issue. He wasn't just right. He was right hearted. He kept in his view. The fight was not for the issue. The fight was for the people. <laughs> Ooh, I feel the Lord on that. Can you say that? The fight is not just for the issue. The fight is for the people. Okay. That's why it's important that the issue gets done right, because you're fighting really for them. You're not just fighting to get the issue right. You're fighting for them. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Right hearted. All right. I love you all so much. Uh, so love to be able to meet you all in person and talk one of these days. You know, I keep saying it. We've got an event coming up. We're headed that direction. In just a few days, we're headed towards Salem, okay? If you have ever been a part of the House of Prayer in any way, even just listening to this program, and you're in the Salem area, if you're within 100 miles, you can do 100 miles, please come. Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. If you haven't pulled out your phone and stuck it in your calendar, stop procrastinating. 
I, I say that because if I don't put it in my calendar, I, it's it's uh, it's not going to happen. Anyway, I'd love to see you there. Love to uh, get you uh, sit down with a cup of coffee and hug your neck and just say thank you. So 20 year anniversary of the Salem's House of Prayer. 20 years ago, we started it and God has done amazing. And it's a celebration of what he has done because it's really his story, history. Amen. So put in your phone, plan on being there. Don't, yeah, don't make excuses. No, just, all right, anyway, love you guys so much. Have a great day. Be blessed. Uh, might see you tomorrow. Just look for the announcement one way or the other. And uh, as always, I like to say it because today can be a good day for you if you want it to be. Yeah. Say, ah, oh, you don't know what problems I'm in. Hey, Jesus never said the only way you could have a good day is if you don't have problems. I would never have a good day, right? Give yourself permission today. I'm going to have a good day today, no matter what happens. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you again soon.